Hi there, my name's Andy Young and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, this is the first of many, no doubt, videos covering the tenacious Yamaha WR450. This is a 2013, 2014 model, I think. We've had it a couple of years and I think it was in stock at Yamaha for about a year as well, so probably three or four years old. Mine's done 700 kilometers. Ben's done about 3,000. This is Ben's bike on the hoist. And we know that uh, because it's more dirty than mine. Although mine has got more impact damage because I fell off. <laughs> anyway, tomorrow we're going for a ride with Yamaha around somebody's farm. we will be hooligans. And because Ben's got shorter legs than me, he needed to buy or find a lowering link for his bike. Because riding on the road is quite different to riding off-road. And when you stop off-road on some really rough terrain and your little leg can't touch the ground, you tend to fall over. Isn't that right, Ben? I haven't done it yet. Mm, I do. Um, so Ben has gone out and finally, after two years, dug deep enough into his pocket to buy a lowering link. Now this is a really quality manufactured piece of kit. This is by a company called Yamlink. And it's such good quality that when the instructions arrived, only about an hour ago, and we're riding tomorrow, that's how close we're running, it says on here, can you see that? Ben, with the WR450F on a stand, personalised instructions. I couldn't believe that. Absolutely amazing. Well done, Yamalink.com. So there you go. That's their, that's their website address. Really, really chuffed. So we're going to basically, I want to show you how to fit one of these. And the reason why we're going to fit it is because we're going to lower the seat height. But we're doing it in a way these actually beef up the. Um, or they allow for a more rider weight so that basically it beefs up the suspension at the back end so it doesn't sag as much because don't forget we've got a little bit less travel before the tyre is going to hit the mudguard for example so um, yeah pretty good looking forward to seeing how this looks on the bike so there we go so if you've got short legs like Ben or not long legs like some people then you really want one of these dead easy to fit and well worth the money. This one cost, what was it, 300 and... 330. 330 New Zealand dollars, which is about four pounds in England. No, it's not. It's about 150 quid in England. Um, and it came from where? The States, was it? Mm, I don't know. It just came from Amazon. Oh, it came off Amazon. Okay, so it's on Amazon. If you search Yamalink, Yamalink WR450F, you'll see this and you should buy it because it's one of the best ones I've seen. Right, so the bike... There you go. It's already on the hoist, and Ben's already jacked at the back wheel. And there isn't too much work to do with these, um, but I'll put it all to camera so that no doubt all you people out there with WR450Fs will know exactly what you need to do. Here we go. Right, here we go. There's the greenery. That's lovely, Ben. Super job. Bit of gardening. Right. Nothing like a clean bike to work on, is there? Okay. So this is the unit here that we're going to be replacing. And um, we've got, to, this is the shock, the bottom of the shock coming down. Got to undo that bolt there. We've then got this bolt here, the rear dog bone bolt. We've got to undo that as well. And all the nuts are on the far side back here. And then, right at the top, onto the swing arm, if you can see that up there, look. Which is just inside there is the third bolt. And that's inside the swing arm. So there's another cover on the other side. Get that undone undo all the bolts and then we can remove this entire unit and replace it with this lovely shiny blue thing which should do a better job and it's going to sit basically like that okay one more cover to remove so we'll get a screwdriver for that and you can see this is the other side now where we've got the nuts to undo so there's one here one here and the other nut will be down this hole behind this grommet so just flick that out there we go yeah. Okay, so you can just see down there that that is the bolt that's hiding inside the swing arm. That's a 19 mil. So we'll get that cracked off first. Excellent. Done. 
Right, what's next? Okay, let's do the dog burn at the back. In fact, yeah. Do the dog burn. Send again. Oh, man, that's tight. 19. And of course, I'll include all the uh, torque settings and stuff on the video for you. And you know, that one's a 17. There we go. Cool. Well, that was easy enough. Okay, so the weight's off the rear wheel, so I'm just going to lower the rear wheel down a fraction just to take all the stress off these bolts so we can push them through. Okay, so I'll just pop that through there. Oh man, that was easy. Didn't even need the punch. Oh, it's just too, too good. Look at that. That doesn't look like a new bike. Wait, it sort of is. Mine's newer though. Right. It's got more miles on its side. Now, it looks like we'll just drop the washer down there. Just, there we go. Perfect. It goes with that one. Super. Okay, so first off, I'm just going to remove that top pin, the one that runs through the swing arm. Let's get that out of the way. And then next, let's just pull the dog bun rear bolt out, there we go, and then finally we can move that dog burn out of the way and remove the bolt through the bottom of the shock, easy, so simple. Okay, so that's the old stock unit removed, and now, and now it's time to fit this nice shiny new thing. But before we do that, we've got a few bits to swap across. Okay, so we've got the old unit. Now, yam bits tell us, say here, important. What does it say? Important. Benjamin, this is important. Pick up the stock part you just took off. Stick one finger in the two main pivots and pull out the metal bushings and pivot pins. Well, I think that's these bits. So we've got to pull these bits out, look. So you've got to remove those, there's one, whoa, looks good, and, oh, bit of mud, that bit there, look, and, ooh, I can see lots of needle roller bearings about to fall out, okay, so we need to use that on the new kit, and the same for the other one, so again, we've got to just, maybe a pair of long nose pliers would be good. Okay, so we'll do the other one. Let's pop that out of there. Perfect, that's that one. Put it over there. And then we can push that through and get that one off there, look. And then again, we need that, uh, that pin. Now, I think these are both the same, but we'll just put them back in where they came from. Now, the problem you've got here is if you leave this like that, all those little tiny needle roller bearings that are inside there, they're all gonna fall out over time, no doubt and you're going to have a bit of a mess, you're going to lose those bearings. So we'll just put it very carefully on the bench, and then, once we've swapped across those components into the new link, we can use these little plastic inserts into the stock unit to hold those bearings together. Sounds a good idea. God, everything's getting covered in mud, Ben. It's not even on the bike yet. Jeez. It's got to be shiny when it goes on the bike, hasn't it? Okay, so this is sort of what you end up with. This is the old stock unit with all the, uh, the bearings, the tubes removed, and what we call the top hat spacers removed as well. And just before I swap those parts across onto the new unit, I thought it might be quite useful for you to know what's going on as regards the change in dimensions of the geometry of the suspension. Now, quite clearly, you can see that the distance between these two bolts, these two bearings, is smaller on the stock than it is on the new unit. But I also think, by the looks of it, anyway, it could be you know, an optical illusion, but it does look like there's slightly more distance here than there is 
on the new one. So we'll just go check that out. So on the original stock, and it's only an approximate measurement, we've got we've got there about 51.2 millimeters. Now, on the new unit, we've got well, I'll just do from one side to there, look. 61. So there's 10 millimeters more between these two mounting points. Okay, what about these ones? Let's have a look. Again, only, only approximate. About 55 on the stock, or 56 on the stock, and on the new unit, we've got... <laughs> Why do they think it's a driveway? Honestly, every car, a junk. It's meant for four-wheel drives, you muppets. Jeez. Okay, so we've got 58 on that one. I'm just going back to this one again. Let's just take that out. Drop it down. There we go. Could we have 58? Yeah. Okay. Optical illusion. I don't think there's any change in distance. If there is, it's marginal between those two mountings. But between here, we've got an extra 10 millimeters. That's good to know. Okay. Now we'll get rid of that. That's finished with. Before we reassemble, it's really important that we grease everything up. So I'm just using some bog standard, what is it? I don't know. There you look. Extreme pressure grease. So we'll use some of that. So whatever's kicking around. And bang some on these tubes. Nice fresh grease. Now obviously we're going to use the grease nipples as well. When we come to reassemble. I'm doing this without gloves on, which is not like me at all. So that's one. And that's the other one. Okay. But we will pump the whole thing full of grease at the end. Now we also need to grease around the outside of these because it's going to run in those bearings or in those bushes, those seals there, look. I want to make sure that they've got a bit of grease on there so they don't tear the seals when we start riding. Looks like I might have a radiator job coming up soon, man, with that guy. <laughs> okay. There we go. Right. Time for some gloves, I think. Okay, so now we're going to rebuild, or reinsert, or insert these inner races. Now, when you're fitting these to the needle roller bearings, it's really, really important that you watch what, the, what those needle roller bearings are doing because it's very easy for them to pop out of that outer race. So hopefully you can see that. There we go. Look, so as I just push that through, there you go. Look, you see that one there? That's the bastard. So we're just going to ease that through there. Look, there we go. And you can see it's now riding up. So we'll just give it a little poke down with something nice and clean. Put him back in his little house. There we go. And hopefully we can carry on. There we go. Oh look, they're all they're all moving now. We don't want that. Where's my scriber? There we go. Okay, so again we'll just poke that one back in. We should be okay now, I think. But yeah, I think you've got to be super, super delicate with these. We don't want those coming. There we go. Right, that's the first bearing done, and we're through the second. Woo hey, fantastic. Right, we'll just stick those little top hats in there, just onto the seals, and that should prevent the whole thing from falling apart. And they should just drop in. There we go. Make sure they're all the way home, otherwise, you're not going to fit the thing to the bike. And you can see just down there, look, that once they're all in, there's no gap between the top hat and that tube. This side, we've got a gap, so it should go further on. Let's even give it a bit of a tap. Where's my special hammer? There we go. Just a bit, a bit of grease in the way, I think. There we are. Right, super. So now, there's no gap between the top hat washer and the tube. There we go. Super. Same this side. That side's good. Right. Off we go again. 
same exactly the same again same part same length that basically has to go in there and fingers crossed we're not going to knock any of those little needle roller bearings out this time so we'll just wiggle it in very carefully oh this guy's done it before look right top hat washer on there super no gap flick it round and we'll do this side here look last one to go in oh no the one dropped off need more hands there we go great job okay they're all in position and this is now ready to put on the bike okay first bolt to go in which is the last one out is the one for the shock bring the dog bone back slide it over without disturbing those uh, top hat washers pop that through there look like <laughs> like that there we go okay and now we just gotta there we go get that one up into position and we should be able to once we lower the bike down there we go look at that it's just very slowly lining into position that's fantastic Pretty good. Okay, last bolt going through. Right, don't forget to line up the flat that stops the bolt from turning. Okay, so the dilemma now is getting the washers in position with the nuts. So you've got a washer to go in first. And then we've got the nut to go on. And that's right down there. Hmm, long, long flat screwdriver, I think. Actually, maybe even the scriber is going to work better for that. So we'll just balance the scriber on the washer, poke it down the hole, and then just, oh, man, into place. Okay, hang on, I need two, two things. Nearly. Great job. Okay. And we'll just get the socket and just put that nut on, sort of finger tight to start off with. Cool. Right, that's the hard one done. Well, that wasn't really that hard, was it? Okay, that wants to go on. That's the other 19mm nut. Okay, making sure it's in the right place on the other side. There we go. Tighten that up. And then lastly, this one doesn't have a washer, it's just straight on. Which is a bit unlike Yamaha, but anyway, I'll stick it on there. And now all we need to do is tighten them up. Bloody hell. Awesome. Now, this bolt, the middle one, is um, needs to be torqued to 58 foot-pounds, or in English, 80 newton meters. That's pretty damn tight, isn't it? Okay, give that a crank up. Newton meters, that's a fair bit. Cool, that's that one. Now, the next one we'll do uh, the one in the swing arm, I think, and that should be oh, 68 Newton meters or 50 foot pounds. And again, just double check that the bolt, the bolt head's in the right position on that flat. Super. Right, just the, uh, the small shock bolt to go. And they tell us that should be 38 uh, foot-pounds, which is, quick conversion for you, 
54 newton meters. And that's for, oh, wrong socket. Useless, okay. 54 newton meters. Done. Right, so all that's left to do now is to grease up those bushes, those bearings. Right, where's my grease gun? Okay, well, fingers crossed we can get this on. It's got a flexi pipe, so it should be pretty easy. This is the new Gros grease gun that I was given. Okay, that's working pretty well. Oh, yeah. Perfect, plenty of grease out of that one. Okay, on to the other one. Which is just in there. Hopefully we're on. Yeah, we're not on. Sounds good. There we go. Perfect. Uh, off you come. Excellent. Now, whatever you do, don't forget to refit those grommets back into the swing arm. Keep all the dirt out. Pretty important. And I think we'll start with the flat bit. There we go. Done. I wonder how much lower it's going to sit. <laughs> Short person status, look at that. Still going down. Holy moly. Okay, one final look around the installed unit then, so you can see lots of grease pouring out up there, which tells us that it's got through to the bearings, and it's greased them up. So it's all gone on pretty well, and it's very important when you're tightening up to make sure that the heads of the bolts are sat against these flats. Otherwise, um, you know, they're not, they're not going to be tight, it's going to cause damage to the unit, and of course the bolt might still turn, which is a bit of a bummer. There you go. So you can see the two grease nipples in situ. Now, I had to change grease gun to get into the second, the lower one, because the angle of that grease nipple is just a bit too tight against the dog bone. But we got there in the end, and you can see around there we've got grease coming out that bottom berry. Not quite as much as the top, but we did get grease out of it. That's the, the black stuff, or blue stuff coming out there, look. So yeah, I think Ben's going to be well chuffed with that. He's waited quite a while for it. Pretty simple to fit. Takes about half an hour, I'd say. So there you go, that's how to fit a lowering link basically onto a WR450F. And ours are about a 2012, but to be honest, they haven't changed for a few years. So the actual job is probably going to uh, relate to quite a few WRs over the years, and in all honesty, probably quite a few other enduro bikes out there. Uh, not even just Yamahas, they're all pretty much the same kind of design. So should this video should give you a pretty good idea what needs to be done. Um, these Yamalink instructions, super helpful, they had all the torque settings and everything you need anyway to do the job and they were quite explicit about certain parts of the job. Now what I haven't covered in this video is the readjustment of the suspension and just reading down here what they suggest that you do is lower the front forks in the triple clamps um, by about three millimeters. Now it doesn't sound a lot but it can change the handling of the bike quite significantly. Um, what do they say? Yeah, start at three millimeters and um, work your way up 
obviously up to the maximum of where the fork diameter permits because those forks do change diameter and you won't be able to go beyond that otherwise the clamp isn't going to work it's not going to hold the fork tight the adjustment of the rear shock all the preload and rebound um, that really depends on the rider and how heavy the rider is some short riders are quite light some short riders are pretty heavy a bit like Ben so that's down to you guys and I'm sure you'll find on YouTube some information about setting up uh, an enduro bike suspension the sag height and so on so that's not for me to cover not on this video maybe I'll cover it in another video in the future sometime okay well hopefully you found that video helpful uh, my name's Andy Young and you've been watching the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel uh, if you have any questions or comments then please do leave them down at the bottom and I'll do my very best to get back to you as soon as I possibly can if you'd like to subscribe and I think it's on that side if you'd like to subscribe then click the subscribe button on the channel and uh, if you want notifications then click the little gear symbol next to it and then you get to tick the box to say you want notifications that way you'll receive an email come through or whatever type of notification you choose you'll get that as and when I uh, upload any new videos and there's usually three or four a week some weeks there's ten some weeks there's two it just depends how busy I am with all the other stuff uh, but there will be many more videos covering work on these WR450s. We've got two of them, one's Ben's, one's mine, and we're really just getting to the start of the season now of doing some, tra uh, some adventure trail rides. So there's going to be a lot more stuff going to need fixing on them. So I'll do videos for that on most of it for you. Um, I may even film the ride tomorrow, who knows? Let's see what happens. Okay, well, uh, you'll find me on Facebook, Google. Google Plus, uh, you'll also find me on Twitter and Instagram. So if you fancy messaging through any of those portals, feel free. Although, to be perfectly honest, uh, messaging through uh, YouTube is by far the easiest way of me communicating with you. If you want to keep it secret, have a, a private conversation, then obviously you can choose any of those other options. I have also included my email address in my uh, about description and uh, my post box as well should you decide to want to send me anything and uh, sponsorship much appreciated uh, we've got 10 tools on board and they do a fantastic job for us but you know oh gloves send some gloves who knows okay <laughs> cheers crew thanks for watching over and out